welcome to today's class today we are going to look at specific heat capacity we are going to summarize everything you need to know in this topic specific heat capacity so pay attention to this video so that you can grab everything you need to know on this topic specific heat capacity let's start with this question a copper calorimeter of mass 30 gram contains 50 gram of oil at 20 degrees celsius some dried ice at zero degrees c is added to the oil if the final steady temperature of the calorimeter and its co contents is zero degrees c calculate the mass of the mass of ice added take specific heat capacity of copper to be 400 joules per kg per carbon specific heat capacity of oil 2400 joules per kg per kelvin specific latent heat of fusion of ice 336000 joules per kg this topic is one of the topics that give students problem in physics and i want to tell you that it is very very easy once you know that specific heat capacity we represent it with c is defined as the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a body by one degree celsius or one kelvin with this you can define specific heat capacity just have this picture in mind that specific heat capacity is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a body by one kelvin or one celsius that is why the unit of specific heat capacity is this quantity of heat is in joules mass is in kg and change in temperature is in kelvin so the unit of specific heat capacity we have it as joules per kg per kelvin now with this in mind know that quantity of heat q is equal to c times this we have mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature before we solve this particular NACO question, just have it in mind that quantity of heat is mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature. It means that three important things are needed for you to solve any problem in specific heat capacity. Mass is needed, change in temperature is needed, and the quantity of heat is needed. And remember that there are two methods of the of determining specific heat capacity the two methods are the method of mixtures and two electrical method don't forget these two methods method of mixtures that make use of calorimeter water and then you determine the mc change in theta then electrical methods such that the heat electrical energy will now be equal to mc change in theta so let's look at this example that we have here a copper calorimeter of mass if you want to solve any problem in physics the first thing is to write out the parameters you are giving so let's start writing a copper calorimeter of mass so you will write just watch the one i'm going to be writing it a copper calorimeter of mass you write mass of calorimeter let me use cal for calorimeter is 30 grams so which we can convert to kg by dividing it remember everything has to be in the standard unit in kg so we divide by 1000 to have it to be 0.03 kg so this is the mass of calorimeter contains 50 gram of oil so mass of oil I will give a little space here and say mass of oil. Mass of oil is 50 gram, which is 0 0.05 kg at temperature 20 degrees. Okay, we'll write out the initial temperature. 
we'll write out the initial temperature let me write it initial temperature 20 degrees c some dried ice at let's write the final temperature theta f i'm using theta final and theta initial at zero degrees c is added to the oil if the final steady temperature of the calorimeter and its content is zero degrees c calculate the mass of ice added so we are looking for something and that is what mass of ice let me write it here mass of ice is what we are looking for let me put it as question mark that's the mass of ice added take specific heat capacity of copper so c is now given specific heat capacity of copper is 400 i will look for remember the calorimeter is made of copper copper calorimeter so i will say specific heat capacity of calorimeter i will write it as 400 joules per kg per kelvin okay now what again is giving specific heat capacity of oil I will come under oil here and write specific heat capacity of oil as 2400 joules per kg per kelvin. Okay, now they give us specific latent heat of fusion of ice. Under ice, latent heat of ice is given as 336000 joule per kg. Remember, for latent heat, there is the chain you see there is no temperature it's just joule per kg now why did i write all these things like it so that we have this in mind mc change in theta mc change in theta ml this one there is no change in temperature the next thing i will ask myself which one is gaining heat and which one is losing heat because we are going to have it in such a way that Heat, heat gained by ice will be equal to heat lost by calorimeter. Heat gained by the ice is equal to heat lost by calorimeter. Heat lost by oil. Once you know the quantity that is gaining heat and the quantity that is losing heat, you will just say heat gain is equal to heat loss. That means you are going to say heat gain by ice. We are, because it's Latin to heat, what we have here is ML. This is for ice. Then heat loss by calorimeter. You are going to say MC change in theta for calorimeter. You see why I had to put everything for calorimeter together. I'll just say mass of calorimeter, specific heat capacity of copper calorimeter, then the change in temperature, mass of ice, latent heat of ice, then the quantity that also gain heat is the oil. I'll just say plus MC change in theta for oil. Once you have this in mind, once you have this in mind, solving problem on specific heat capacity will be very easy for you because you know the quantity that is gaining heat and the quantity that is losing heat heat lost is equal to heat gain you just put for each quantity that gain heat mc change in theta or ml depending if depending on if it's ice or another one then quantity that is losing heat mc change in theta mc change in theta so let's now put our values and get the final answer okay let's put our values now ml mc change in theta for calorimeter plus mc change in theta for oil remember we are looking for this m mass of calorimeter times this is given l is given as 336000 is equal to mass mass for calorimeter is given as zero 0 0.03 times specific heat capacity of calorimeter which is 400 times the change in temperature 20 minus 0 which is 20 that's for this side plus the other side mass 
the mass of oil we have it as 0 0.05 times specific heat capacity of oil times the change in temperature. You see how easy specific heat capacity is. So now let's continue our solving. We have 336123 three, three, and that's the unknown is equal to if we put this together, we are going to have 240 plus 0 points. If we multiply that out, we'll have 2400. Zero, zero. Okay, so 336M is equal to 2640. So that our final answer, the mass we are looking for, will be 2640 over 336000. Zero, zero, zero. Let's go on and use our calculator and get the final answer as 0 0.000, okay, 0 0.00786 kg. So this will be your final answer. Let's look at this one. Two metal A and B lose the same quantity of heat. It means that Q for A is equal to Q for B. When their temperatures drop from 20 degrees C to 15 degrees C, if the specific heat capacity of M is twice that of B, calculate the ratio of mass of A to mass of B. This is where we should pay more attention to in solving this kind of question. Okay, they lose the same quantity of heat. Now, change in temperature, 20 minus 15 is 5 degrees. So now, what are we looking for? We want to get the mass. But before that, the said, if the specific heat capacity of A is twice that of B, which means that the specific heat capacity of A depends on B, then what is the specific heat capacity of B? Let it be C. Let's just use C. Let the specific heat capacity of B be C. Then if the specific heat capacity of A is equal to twice that of B, 3C. So I got that of B. This is like what problem first? Then that of A is three times that of B. So what are we looking for? The ratio of the mass. I remember that we are using Q, for A is equal to Q for B. So, and Q is equal to MC change in theta. This is the main thing you should not forget. If we are using this, so mass of A, remember we are looking for mass of A, then specific heat capacity of A times the change in temperature, which is 5, is equal to mass of B times specific heat capacity of B, times also the change in temperature. Now, let's put in mass of A. Specific heat capacity of A is 3C. 3C times 5. Specific heat capacity of B. Specific heat capacity of B is C. C times 5. Okay, in this case now, we we'll have MA times 15C is equal to MB times 5C. So we are looking for ratio of mass of A to B. You know, we can divide here by mass of B, mass of B by both sides. So that we we'll have mass of A over mass of B. Mass of A over mass of B will be equal to, we'll divide both sides by 15C, 15C, we'll now have 5C over 15C. So we can go ahead and solve further and say C will cancel C, 5 here 1, 5 here 3. So that the ratio will now be 1 over 3. Our final answer will be 1 ratio 2. Please like this video and drop a comment. I hope you understand how to solve problems of specific heat capacity. Thank you.